There will be four free response questions on the AP Precalculus exam. This video is modeled after FRQ4. It's about trigonometric, exponential, and logarithmic equations. Let's pretend it's from the 2003 AP Precalculus exam. If you appreciate the content, please give it a like. Pause the video if you'd like to read over these general directions. In part A, functions g and h are given by this expression and this expression. A part 1. Solve g of x equals 4 pi over 3 for values of x in the domain of g. We need to set g of x equal to 4 pi over 3 and solve. To isolate the arc cosine x, we can multiply both sides by 1 half. On the left side, this will cancel out the 2, leaving behind arc cosine of x. On the right hand side, the 2 in the denominator will divide into the 4 and leave 2 pi in the numerator, so 2 pi over 3. We need to get x by itself. We can cancel out arc cosine by taking the cosine of both sides of this equation. So actually, I think I will just slide this over. So I can take the cosine of the left and the cosine of the right. As I mentioned, the cosine and arc cosine cancel each other out because they are inverses. So we are left with x equals. The cosine of 2 pi over 3, well, the reference angle is obviously the pi over 3. So the cosine of 2 pi over 3 will be the same as the cosine of pi over 3, which is 1 half, except uh, it might be negative depending on the quadrant. By the way, I'm assuming that you've long ago memorized these nine trig values. If you have not, pause the video and memorize the chart right now. I just use the fact that the cosine of pi over 3 is 1 half. On the left side of the unit circle we have pi, which we can think of as 3 pi over 3. So 2 pi over 3 will be right here in the second quadrant. In the second quadrant, x values, and thus the cosine function, are negative. So x is equal to negative 1 half. That's it for A part 1. A part 2. Solve h of x equals negative 5 for values of x in the domain of h. So we need to set h of x equal to negative 5 and solve. That gives us 2 plus 3 natural log x is equal to negative 5. Subtracting 2 from both sides gives us 3 natural log x is equal to negative 7. Dividing both sides by 3 gives us the natural log of x is equal to negative 7 over 3. To cancel out the natural log, we can drop a base e on both sides of the equation like this. It's called exponentiating both sides of the equation. Natural log and e to the x power are inverse functions which cancel each other out. So on the left hand side we will have simply x. x equals e to the negative 7 thirds power. For this particular problem that's a full credit answer, but very often the directions will say that you can't have a negative exponent. So be prepared to write the answer as 1 over e to the positive 7 thirds power. For part b, j of x is given by this expression, and k of x equals this expression. b part 1, rewrite j of x as an expression involving secant x and no other trigonometric functions. Here's a set of trig identities that you're going to have to memorize. There will be no formula sheet on the AP Precalculus exam. So, pause the screen and practice writing these identities on a piece of scratch paper from memory. Also, make sure you know these 
basic trig identities as well. This first Pythagorean identity is the one that shows up the most often, and we're about to use it right now. Sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. I'm focusing on the denominator, sine squared x minus 1. I would like to get rid of this minus 1 somehow, and I think I can use this to make it happen. Imagine that I subtract cosine squared from both sides, because I see that we have sine squared, but no cosine squared. So let's subtract it. That would leave us with sine squared x is equal to 1 minus cosine squared x. Now, um, I can substitute this expression in for sine squared x. So let's do that now. Replacing sine squared x with 1 minus cosine squared x gives us this. Notice that the 1 and the minus 1 will cancel each other out, and we will be left with negative cosine squared x. Don't forget the negative. Um, students often forget that part. So on the next step, I'm going to rewrite cotangent x as cosine x over sine x. And then right next to that, we have sine x. Um, just to be clear, I'm going to write it as sine x over 1. Now in the denominator, as I said, we are left with negative cosine squared x. On the next step, sine and sine will cancel each other out. They are connected by multiplication, so this is allowed. If this were addition or subtraction, we could not cancel out the sine x and the sine x. So, on the next step uh, in the numerator, in fact, I think I can squeeze this in right here. I have simply cosine x. And in the denominator, we have negative cosine squared x. This means we have two cosines in the denominator and one cosine in the numerator. The cosine in the numerator will cancel out one of the cosines in the denominator. I'm going to put this negative kind of in the middle. Um, so I have no more cosines left in the numerator, so I'm just going to put a 1 as a placeholder. And I will have one cosine left in the denominator. So we are left with negative 1 over cosine. And guess what? Uh, 1 over cosine is secant. So we have negative secant x. And that's it. Again, be careful to include the negative, which uh, gives us negative secant x. A common mistake is to simply have secant x. The AP graders will ignore your scratch work, but I recommend separating it by a vertical line and labeling it as scratch work. B part 2. Rewrite k of x as an expression in the form 3 to the ax plus b power, where a and b are constants. We need everything to have a base 3, and 9 can be rewritten as 3 squared. The x plus 4 will go in parentheses next to the 2. And just copying down the rest of it, we have times 3 to the 4x minus 1 power over 3 to the x power. When you multiply with like bases, you add the exponents. So I think I'll show an extra step here. Um, I'm adding the exponents, um, but I need to distribute this 2. So I'm going to have 2x plus 8, and then plus 4x minus 1. And this is all over 3 to the x power. Now I'm going to combine my like terms. So I have 6x, and uh, 8 minus 1 is 7, so that's 6x plus 7. 
over 3 to the x power. When you divide with like bases, you subtract the exponents. So this is going to be 3 to the, and as I do 6x plus 7 minus x, I'm going to subtract x from the 6x. These are the like terms. So I end up with 5x plus 7. And that's it. Part C. The function m is given by m of x equals 2 natural log x minus natural log 5x minus 6. Find all input values in the domain of m that yield an output value of 0. So basically we need to set m of x equal to 0 and solve. As I rewrite m of x, I'm going to use the property that tells us that when you have a logarithm, with a number multiplied in the front, you can move it to the exponent. So I'm going to go straight to natural log of x squared minus the natural log of 5x minus 6 and then equals the 0. This will be easier to solve if we move the second logarithm to the other side of the equation by adding it to both sides. So we will have the natural log of x squared is now equal to the natural log of 5x minus 6. We can cancel out the natural log by dropping a base e on both sides of the equation. We are exponentiating both sides. So the lns will now go away and we will be left with x squared is equal to 5x minus 6. Since I have an x squared and a plain x, this is the type of problem where we need to get 0 on one side and factor. So it feels a little bit silly because we move this over to the right and now we're moving it back to the left, but that's how it goes sometimes. So we're going to have x squared, and uh, so I'm subtracting the 5x, and I'm adding the 6. So plus 6, and that is equal to 0. So this is going to factor as a binomial times a binomial. x squared can only factor as x times x. 6, hmm, this can either factor as 2 times 3, or it could be 6 times 1, and it makes a difference which it is. Inner plus outer must equal the middle. Uh, when I say that, inner, I have 2 times x, which is 2x. Outer, I have 3 times x. So inner plus outer. This must equal the middle, which is the negative 5x. We control the signs. For these terms to add up to negative 5x, uh, both terms would have to be negative. So that means a negative here and a negative here. We can check to see if this is actually the right choice by seeing if we get the correct sign on the constant. And indeed, negative 2 times negative 3 is positive 6. So this was the right choice. Quick side lesson. If we had chosen wrong and we had gone with uh, 1 times 6 to make 6, um, inner would be 1x, outer would be 6x. We're shooting for a middle of negative 5x. We can get a negative 5x if we have a positive 1 and a negative 6. So positive here, negative here. Everything was looking good, and in fact, this would be a common mistake. However, uh, we are not getting the correct sign on this constant positive 1 times negative 6 would be negative 6, not positive 6. That's how you know this is not the right way to go. Setting each of these factors equal to 0, we get x is equal to 2, and x is equal to 3. Before I put a box around these, I just need to make sure that um, these are both valid solutions. We are not to allowed to take the log of a negative number. 
So the fact that both of these are positive does not mean we are safe. We have to make sure that after we plug them in, we don't end up with a negative once you simplify. So right here we just have a plain x. So 2 and 3 are both fine here. If I plug in 2 here, that's going to be 10 minus 6, that's positive 4. If we plug in 3 here, that's 15 minus 6, that's positive 9. So both of these answers are valid. And that's it for FRQ4. Hey guys, don't forget to like and subscribe, but also if you found this video helpful, there's a lot more where that came from. You can click the upper link, which will take you to the whole unit playlist, or you can click the lower link, which will take you to the next video in the playlist. See you there.